So, how do you go to toilet in medieval times? The most obvious thing to do, if you have a shovel and you're in a rural environment, you dig a hole in the ground, squat over it, do your business, fill it back in and let nature take its course. That is exactly what millions of people do around the world today, let alone in the medieval period. If you lived in a village, a town or a city, you would almost certainly have made use of a night bucket. You would put your solids in the bucket and you would collect your liquid waste in a different vessel. And interestingly, human waste was collected by what's called gong farmers and sold to actual farmers to spread on their land, much like animal dung is today. I'm inside now with my solid waste night soil bucket there. Liquid human waste, urine, was collected separately and was processed and used in a number of different industrial applications. It was used for washing clothes. Yes, really, your clothes would be washed in urine. It was also matured and concentrated and used in tanning and other chemical processes. The maturing process is specific and it says sometimes you have to mature the urine for six weeks. So imagine that, <laughs> imagine your liquid waste sitting in a pot for six weeks until it's mature and ready to be used. That must have been quite strong and potent smelling stuff. Apparently concentrated urine softens leather really nicely. So as well as using feces, dog muck in particular in the tanneries, they also mixed it with human urine as well. And certain metallurgical processes were considered to be better if it was using what was called piss at the time. And in particular, there's one note we have, which is that the piss of a red-headed boy is preferred for quenching a certain type of steel. Who knows whether it made any difference. Inns often had a barrel with a plank across it, which the doings of the patrons were collected of an evening, and then it was emptied in a particular place uh, in the morning by some probably poor lowly servant. Some inns were notorious for being more clean or more filthy than others. And we know that, for example, the rushes that were spread on the ground, some of them were changed regularly and had herbs strewn amongst them to smell nice. Um, others apparently stank quite heavily uh, and were notorious for having bits of food and the remains of what the guard dogs left behind um, mixed amongst them. So you could probably tell the nature of the clientele and the nature of the establishment you were visiting by the cleanliness and freshness or otherwise of the rushes on the ground. One of the interesting sources that I use are the court records from what are called manorial courts. These are very minor medieval courts. They were very important for everyday people and a lot of them involve cesspits overflowing and uh, in a lot of cases the roads are blocked by the waste coming from cesspits overflowing because of rainwater and not being emptied enough and detritus around the road. So everybody was expected to keep the piece of the road in front of their dwelling uh, relatively clear. And in a lot of cases, we know that the manorial courts prosecuted people as a result of them not doing their duty and keeping the front of their accommodation clean and tidy. In many towns and cities, there was a specific place where you emptied your night soil. So the barrels from inns, the night soil buckets from domestic premises would all be taken to a particular place. And in very robust medieval language, these places were called things like shite street and shitting road or shitting lane or shite brook. Yes, there are many, many places in medieval maps that just describe the function of the place. Not many of these street names still exist because modern sensibilities or more likely Victorian sensibilities change them, often changing Shit Street to Ship Street, uh, even though it's got nothing to do with ships. 
just to avoid embarrassing the fine people of the town. But there are a few that are still in existence. In Much Wenlock in Shropshire in England, there's a place called Scheitbrook, and that's uh, specifically a place where medieval people used to empty their chamber pots. Does the job really, doesn't it? It explains what it's for, and that still exists and you can still go and see it. I think it's a bit of a shame that we haven't maintained some of these names. I think it would be wonderful if we still had Pissing Alleys or Shiteburn Streets, but unfortunately they're now an echo of the past. If you were nobility and you lived in a medieval castle, how did you go to the loo? Must have been different than in a village, of course. And you were wealthy and you would have expected different circumstances and you would have had servants to do things for you. So what did you actually do? How did you go to the loo in a medieval castle? The evidence we have of the time is that medieval castles were often not how we see them today. Today, medieval castles in England have often been slighted or taken down or more or less ruined. During the English Civil War, actually, in the post-medieval period, some of them were literally blown up by the government using gunpowder. Back in the day, it's very likely that they were whitewashed. In some cases, they were plastered smooth over the stones and whitewashed again. So they would have been gleaming white buildings, very different to what we know today. But, and there's a big but, there are small projecting rooms, shelves on the outside of some medieval castles. And these, if you look up, you can see holes underneath them. And what these are, these are garderobes. And the garderobes allow people to do their business outside the castle wall, down into the moat. Now imagine that, you've got a whitewashed castle, plastered, very nice, and unfortunately you have streaks of human waste down the wall from the use of the garderobes. Must have been not quite as romantic an idea as we often think of medieval castles today. It might be interesting to think that presumably some poor servant and a ladder had occasionally to go up and maybe literally scrub those walls as clean as they possibly could get. But the lime wash is likely to have retained some visual memory of human waste on the side. So maybe they were re-whitewashed from time to time. But it is quite astonishing to think that these beautiful castles <laughs> potentially <laughs> would have had streaks of shit down the side sometime. And often the garderobes themselves, not always, but often are not on the front face, the, if you like, the entrance way to the castle. They're often on the sides or on the rear for obvious reasons. I mean, Quite frankly, if you had a beautiful castle and unfortunately your toilets emptied onto the outside of them, well, you probably don't want that to be shown to your guests or the king who's riding to stay with you for a while. The garderobes themselves today, if you go and visit them, are often quite small, crowded, and they're not smelly these days because they're not used, but there's a lot of thought that maybe they got quite smelly, and I think that's quite possible, especially in the, uh, in the height of summer they would have probably got quite smelly. But we do know that they were quite richly appointed, or certainly some of them were. So it's possible that the posher garderobes were covered with fabrics and were nicely cushioned, and there was a lid over the actual hole itself, so that, broadly speaking, for the poshest occupants of the castle, the garderobe was a place to take your ease, and what probably wasn't particularly unpleasant. It's very likely, though, that there were other garderobes used by servants, used by guards, used by men-at-arms, that were a little bit more like the public toilets you might find at a music festival in the summer, which some of us have experienced and, quite frankly, can get incredibly pungent, as many of you will know. Sometimes the waste itself would fall into a barrel, which when full would be taken away by Gong Farmer and processed. And other times it appears that the waste went directly into the moat. Now that's an interesting one because a lot of people think of medieval moats as picturesque lakes filled with plant life and fish and everybody thinks, well, that's lovely. Well, in the medieval period, of course, you have to remember that it's most likely to be, if not a complete cesspit, it's certainly going to have a lot of waste in it. And so if you want to attack that castle, you are going to have to <laughs> fight your way across a moat that is filled with the waste from quite a large number of people using the garderobe chutes and emptying directly into that fluid and being mixed up with it. So it wouldn't necessarily be pure clean water, it wouldn't necessarily be just waste, 
but it might be a combination of all of it. So you want to avoid getting any cuts, getting it in your mouth or in your eyes, because infection was a big problem in the medieval period. So don't think of medieval moats necessarily in the time as places of beauty. Think of them as waste pits in many ways, filled with fluids. There was a much later medieval castle built right towards the end of the medieval period called Bodium, and I've jousted there. Um, and it has a beautiful layout and it's a symmetrical thing. It's also particularly interesting in that it is one of the first examples of what they call enclosed garderobe chutes. So there are no external garderobes, or rather the garderobes are still built into the walls. You still do the long drop and the waste falls into a special chamber below, which is then emptied out by gong farmers, by presumably shovel and spade, uh, and put in a cart and taken away. But Bodium is a beautiful place, and it's nice to know that Bodium itself would not have been a shit-stained castle. It may have had a moat that was nicer than other moats, and it is beautiful, it's well worth a visit. Garderobes were also sometimes used as wardrobes, and one of the references I found was that apparently the ammonia from the garderobe can help get rid of lice and fleas and generally sort of fumigate your clothes. So it's an interesting one. So obviously some of the high status garderobes were very neat and tidy and probably didn't pong very much. But it appears that some of them were extremely smelly, but that was put to good use. Just like the solids and liquids were collected and processed and used, so it appears the noxious fumes from certain garderobes were used to try to get rid of vermin to a certain extent. And I guess a really strong ammonia might actually have that effect. I've mentioned gong farmers before, and that was the class of worker whose job was to collect and empty and process human waste, mostly the solids. And they literally, in the case of Bodium, would have dug it out of pits in towns and villages. They were paid to empty cesspits. It was actually quite a dangerous job as well. We know from the records that people died of fumes while emptying particularly noxious and big cesspits. So it wasn't you know, without its risks. And what a horrible way of going and being basically suffocated by the noxious fumes from a pit of other people's poo. Gong farmers probably had the last laugh though. As a result of the need for potassium nitrate in ever increasing quantities because of the manufacture of gunpowder and the importance of that in warfare, they had a monopoly over handling human solid waste and they became incredibly wealthy and second only to the goldsmiths guild in places like London. And perhaps it's where the term filthy rich comes from. Because, let's face it, if you're wealthy and you're dealing with other people's poo, Filthy Rich describes you quite well. <laughs> <laughs>